again, the Ukrainians are now in deep trouble. Um, NATO is now in deep trouble. Uh, uh, Trump is, he could have gone with a, with a, a, a Nikki Haley and said to the world, hey, listen, I got to give stuff to my base, but I'm not going to abandon the world. This pick is a horror on the world stage. Horror. So J.D. Vance matters because he, uh, uh, Donald Trump is pointing the Republican Party in a very scary direction for the long term. He cries more than I do. And I, I'm a woman and, you know, I, I can get emotional at times as well. But he cries. Yeah. He's on his period. Maybe he needs a hysterectomy. All that damn <laughs> crying and bleeding that he's doing nonstop. Trump finally picked his VP. And it is J.D. Vance. I got to say, not a name that I thought about um, was not on my radar. Uh, I want to start with you, Tyrone. What do you think about this pick? Well, um, he there's a lot of hate being made about uh, him not liking Trump initially. Mm -hmm. He's even he he said that. But uh, like Paul on the road to Damascus, <laughs> he's, you know, changed his mind. They said that uh, Vivek Ramaswamy and. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. had a lot to do with that. Uh -huh. uh, and I think that that actually uh, bolsters his credibility as a vice president because he's a convert. OK, mm -hmm. he's he's not necessarily uh, a fan from the beginning. So there's something substantive that he saw that uh, made him come over. Um some people are saying he's somehow allied with BlackRock. I need to see more about that because they said the same thing about Vivek Ramaswamy, and that was not accurate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, these days you can just tar and feather someone real easy with throwing yeah. up you know, BlackRock, you know. Um, so I need to see a lot more about uh, any affiliation uh, there. And I mean, hey. To be honest with you, we're all affiliated with BlackRock because they own that the other day. Day. Right, right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. What well, um and I know and I'm I'm this is kind of going off course a little bit, but can you explain what BlackRock is? Because it's been thrown yeah. around a lot. They are a private equity fund. Um mm -hmm. Larry Fink, appropriately named CEO uh for their company. Now, the problem with BlackRock. It's not just that they, you know, control uh, trillions of dollars in assets. The problem is that they want to also be social engineers. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this LGBTQ stuff, uh, a lot of the DEI stuff, BlackRock holds so many shares of any given S&P 500 company that they can direct the company's, you know, programs and uh, get in there and say, you need to do this DEI uh, metric and meet this uh, percentage of employees over here, over there. This is what's going on with the airlines right now. And it's like, nobody ever stops to think, well, maybe black people just don't want to be pilots. But mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of thing that BlackRock is infamous for, not mm -hmm. just investing and wanting to see the performance of the company uh, go up you know, financially, but no, they want to get in there and social engineer. Right. Okay. So adding ESGs and things. Yep. Too. Exactly. Okay. Yep. okay. Um, before I get you in here, Shelly, I want you guys to take a look at this clip of Van Jones losing his mind about this JD Vance uh, um, <laughs> pick here. All right. Let me see here. One moment. All right, take a look. Vance is an ideological nationalist. That's a much more dangerous virus because he can make this, he can polish this stuff and make it seem palatable to people. He can sell this stuff to Silicon Valley. He can sell this stuff other places. And what it does is it locks the Republican Party on a pathway uh, that I think is dangerous for the world. Again, the Ukrainians are now in deep trouble. Um, NATO is now in deep trouble. Uh, uh, Trump is, he could have gone with, a, with a, a, a Nikki Haley and said to the world, hey, listen, I got to give stuff to my base, but I'm not going to abandon the world. This pick is a horror on the world stage. Horror. So J.D. Vance matters because he, uh, Donald Trump is pointing the Republican Party in a very scary direction for the long term. The horror. The horror. <laughs> so they are losing it. Uh, what are your thoughts on this pick, Shelly? 
Look, I have to, when I heard it, I wasn't upset. I wasn't, you know, excited. I was glad that he made the announcement. I'm certainly not against JD Vance. Um, you know, he has he's come out, he's come a long way or come full circle, whatever one we want to call it. But Van Jones, let me tell you, Van Jones cries more than I do. Okay. He cries more than I do. And I, I'm a woman and, you know, I, I can get emotional at times as well, but he cries. He's been crying since what? It's been about three weeks now, maybe almost a month. Three, Is he on his three, three years. years. Three Is years. He on his period? Yeah. He's on his period. Maybe he needs a hysterectomy. All that damn <laughs> crying and bleeding that he's doing nonstop. He gets on my nerves with that. I mean, goodness gracious. The man is, a, he's a um, he's a, a senator or a congressman, whatever. He's a senator. Ohio, for strategic purposes, he's probably going to be able to pull in some of those Midwestern states, right, mm -hmm. to, to help Trump over the hump. Uh, key states, Ohio, uh, Michigan, that we need to win the election. So look, J.D., I mean, Van, uh, what's his name? This is Van Jones. Yeah, Van Jones. He, I hope, does, uh, Tyrone, does BlackRock have any investments in Kleenex? Uh, <laughs> probably. Yeah. They probably do, right. Well, right. Tell, tell Van Jones. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not upset about it. I'm not upset with the pick. Um, Definitely, I think this is a win for conservatives. Um, you know, and I and I did do a little digging into who he is because I didn't really know much about JD right. Vance. Mm -hmm. I did, however, see the movie Hillbilly Elegy, which it was a very good uh movie. I I uh, uh recommend it you guys take a look. But he's a, a marine vet, mm -hmm. uh, so he'll actually be the first marine vet to ever serve as vice president of the United States. Um, one thing that's going to tick off these leftist racial types people is he is for he's a white. He comes from white working class, middle class, Midwest background. So he was a poor kid from the Midwest. Yep. Uh, Vance detailed his upbringing in this in his acclaimed 2016 men, memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, which was later adapted into a film directed by Ron Howard and starring Amy Adams and Glenn Close. Now in the movie, uh, it's, it's a, or the book, I should say, it's a passionate and personal analysis of culture in crisis, that of the white working class American. The decline of this group, a demographic of our country that has been slowly disintegrating over 40 years, has been reported on with growing frequency and alarm. This is coming from uh, the uh, synopsis of his book. Right but has never before been written about as searingly from the inside. J.D. Vance tells the true story of what a social, regional, and class decline feels like when you were born with it hung around your neck. So again, um, you know, he has this, you know, he has this story and it lends a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of, I don't know, um, highlights on mm -hmm. the poor working, poor white working class. And you know, anytime you say white, that drives these leftists crazy. Because as we saw on The View, uh, they hate white people. I yes, mean, right. they, they, white <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So, I like this pick. Um, I'm glad they didn't go with the identity politics BS, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's working out wonderfully in places like Dalton, Illinois, and Oakland, California. Um, <laughs> right. You've got uh, J.D. Vance is, you can you can see him as president if the unfortunate occurs, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and also, the other thing I like about him is, unlike Tim Scott, I call Tim Scott the black Lindsey Graham because <laughs> both of them have never seen a Ukraine funding bill that they don't like. All right. So J.D. Vance is right in lockstep with Trump about ending this whole farce in Ukraine. Somebody said to me today, oh, well, if if we end it, then Eastern Europe is just going to be taken over by Putin. They're going to go and take over Poland. Stop watching the news. You you have no idea what you're talking about. Poland is a NATO country. Right. Article 5 says if Putin attacks one of the NATO countries, he's basically attacking them all. Putin has not even been able to close this thing down in Ukraine. All right. He doesn't have the manpower 
or the expeditionary power to go in and start invading NATO countries. It's just something to get the masses, the mm-hmm. ignorant masses to part with their hard earned taxpayer dollars, okay? That could stay here in the inner cities or in Appalachia, but mm-hmm. is being farmed out to Kiev so that Zelensky's wife can buy a new Bugatti, okay? Right. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening yeah. right? Right. with our taxpayer money. So I'm glad that Vance is, uh, you know, against that whole thing, wants to bring it to an end. So uh, you, your Ukrainian flags will go on sale soon, people, okay? Because <laughs> uh, that's about to be over. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that this is a, a prime time for to unite us, you know, uh, the, the as far as the races are concerned. Because when you look at his background, you know, he came from a poor... Uh, drug induced, a lot of drugs, alcohol abuse going on in his family. He was raised by his grandmother, I believe. Um, And so, you know, and then he has a story of hope. I mean, he, out of all that, he was able to put himself through law school. Uh, He's married now, actually he's married to an uh, Indian American woman. So that has a, a common thread with a lot of the urban black people across, right across the country <laughs> and and you see what he's doing so he feels like instead of us sending the money over to ukraine to fighting all these foreign wars he was he's saying no it needs to stay here and, right. and go to our communities so you would think that you know a lot of black people would find a commonality with him there and show I think so too. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, it sounds like a lot of black people, that, a lot of black people that I know that, you know, maybe we grew up with. And I'm not saying that mockingly. I'm saying that many people that I know would be able to relate to that kind of story in that sense, you know, a sort of a, a come up and story or if you, if you will, coming of age story in a sense. But one of the things, uh, Tyrone, I think you touched on the 2K day, um, since J.D. Vance is from the Midwest, I thought about this again, it's a strategy, but economically, remember the first thing that Biden did when he came into office was he basically axed the Keystone, uh, the Keystone Pipeline um, project, right? right? That that project, Tyrone, you can tell me better, tell it better than I can. I'm sure that project fed Middle America. Those were people who had who, who relied on those jobs and the and the ancillary uh, businesses that that mm-hmm. kind of went through went, went, um, you know, went through that and fed from that pipeline. So just imagine the people with JD Vance that he may be able to pull into, um, you know, again economically because Trump is about business. Just imagine that that swath, if you will, that swath of the of the heartland coming coming back to and voting for Trump in November. It would be great. No, absolutely. I agree. The poorest county in America is uh, a predominantly, what well, really they're all white county down in Arkansas. I forget the name of the county. And you're right. A lot of jobs evaporated when the mm-hmm. policy changed. And I might add that one of the biggest lobbies against the pipeline was Warren Buffett mm-hmm. and the late Charlie Munger because they owned well, Munger's gone now, but they own Burlington Northern Santa Fe, the railroad, which transports oil in their tanker cars. Mm -hmm. So they put a lot of money into opposition of the Keystone Pipeline because they want to keep that oil on their trains, which, by the way, is more environmentally uh, detrimental than a pipeline, but whatever. Uh, So, yes, the, the white middle class has been just devastated economically out there in the interior of Mm -hmm. the country. Okay. Where we said it on the show before, if you are not in Manhattan, LA, DC, or maybe Miami. Okay. Cause they Miami's on the fringe, but everything else to these people is flyover country. They don't care about it. Okay. Trump could be somewhere on a yacht, somewhere on a golf course, 365. Okay. But instead he genuinely cares about Americans and wants to see people prosper. Yeah. And I mean, you hear these leftists and Democrats, I should say, always talk about diversity. Well, when you look at the coalition behind Trump right now, 
It's very diverse. Yes. I mean, look, you have Elon Musk just endorsed him this week. Elon Musk is not a yes. conservative by any means. Yes. I mean, he's probably more fiscally conservative, but he's pledged $45 million a month to the Trump super PAC. The, the mean, wealthiest African-American in the world. Right, right. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I mean, you have people like him. Uh, you know, I think I was reading uh, there was some Democrat uh, 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 billion millionaire who used to give all their money to the Democrats. Now he's also backing Trump, and I can't remember what his name was, but he's like a you know a popular business person. Yeah, so I mean, they, we're seeing the coalition you know become very diverse, mm -hmm. uh, and and they're they're putting it behind Trump. So. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. get Peter Ackerman, Peter Ackerman, yeah. Oh, Pete, uh, Ack, Bill Ackman, Bill, Bill Ackman. Ackman. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you look at the left, they're anything but diverse. They yeah, are yeah. like, if, for all of those out there who are familiar with Star Trek, there is a alien species called the Borg. They all, oh, oh my God, like they, they <laughs> gotta be of one mind. They are a hive mind. If you step one toe outside of that liberal ideology. If you question any aspect of it, they will come down on you like a sledgehammer. So they're not really diverse. They have absolutely no diversity of thought uh -uh. at all. Nope. Yeah. No, no. I might have to go watch an episode of Star Trek tonight just because I... <laughs> just yeah. watch the Democrat National Committee and you'll see the yeah, board, you know. okay? <laughs> the hive mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we definitely will continue to...